Hello everybody. In this lesson I will discuss box and whiskers diagrams, skewed and symmetrical data as well as quartiles in statistics. A box and whiskers diagram is an accurate diagram and is used to display the five number summary which consists of the lowest value Q1, also known as the lower quartile, Q2, also known as the median, the middle value, Q3 is the upper quartile and the highest value. Quartiles divide a data set into four equal parts. The data must always be arranged in an ascending order, that means from small to big. The position of the quartile for data set with n items can be calculated using. So to find the position of Q1, the lower quartile, you will use the formula a quarter times bracket n plus 1. For Q2, the median, it's half bracket n plus 1. And for Q3, the upper quartile, the formula is 3 quarters times n plus 1. Let's do an example. A group of seven learners spent the following amounts at the school's intramural day. And then there's your data already arranged in a ascending order. 37, 42, 45, 51, 66, 66, 141. Give the five number summary for the data and draw a box and whiskers diagram. So we will start with the lowest value is 37. The highest value, 141. Then let's work out the position for Q1. The formula, a quarter in plus one. So n is the data entries, the amount, there's seven of them. Therefore it's a quarter bracket seven plus one, a quarter of eight is two. Then q2 is half bracket n plus one. Therefore it's half bracket seven plus one, half of eight is four. So the position will be number four. Well let me show you. q1 um, the answer was 2, therefore the second position you find 42, therefore Q1's value is 42. Q2, the median's position is number 4, therefore 51 is Q2, the median. And then Q3 is 3 quarters of n plus 1, which means 3 quarters of 7 plus 1 is 8, 3 quarters of 8 is 6. Therefore, the sixth position, you will find Q3, which is 33. And now we can sketch the box and whiskers diagram. And remember, it's a very accurate diagram. So we will use graph paper for that. Therefore, the lowest value you'll find at 37, Q1's value is 42. Q2, the median's value is 51. Q3 is 66. And then the highest value is 141. Now let's find the value of the outlier. Now, to work out if there's an outlier, what you do is you need Q1, Q2, and Q3, Q3's value. Then, there's a little formula that you're going to use. To find the lower boundary, the formula is Q1 minus 1,5 times U. IQR and IQR is the interquartile range. So let's work that out first and you work out the IQR by saying Q3 minus Q1 which is in this case 66 minus 42 is equal to 24. So back into our formula 
in Q1 place we can substitute 42 minus 1,5 and the IQR is 24 and then it's 42 minus 36 and then you find 6. So this 6 means this is the lower boundary. So if your lowest value is smaller than 6 then you can say it's an outlier. The upper boundary, the equation is Q3 plus 1,5 times IQR. Remember IQR, interquartile range. Therefore, Q3 is 66 plus 1,5 times 24. 66 plus 36. And then your upper boundary is 102. So any value that's greater or bigger than 102 will be seen as an outlier. So our uh, highest value is 141. Therefore, it's bigger than the upper boundary. Therefore, 141 is indeed an outlier. Let's look at symmetrical and skewed data. A symmetrical data set is balanced, or nearly so, on either side of the median. Skewed data is spread out more on one side of the median than on the other side. Now there's a little calculation that you can do. You can say that if the mean minus the median is very close to zero or equal to zero, the data is symmetrical. And then there on the left hand side is a box and whiskers diagram that shows symmetrical data and on the right hand side there is a little um, bell curve for you where you can see that the mean is equal to the median. If when we do the little um, equation mean minus median is greater than zero. In other words, your answer is positive. The data is skewed to the right or positively skewed. And there you will see on the left hand side is the box and whiskers diagram that shows a positively skewed data set. There's also this little formula. Now, if you look on top, you will see mean and to the right is the median. And this means that the median is smaller than the mean, then your data is positively skewed. Now, what happened there, you will say, um, just have a look, your equation was mean minus median greater than zero. So, if the mean walks across, it becomes minus the mean. And then when you divide away the minus, you will see, remember, when you divide away with the minus, the sign uh, swaps. Therefore, the median is smaller than the mean. But that's not really important. I just need you to understand that when you do the calculation mean minus median and your answer is positive, then the data is skewed to the right. If when you do the calculation mean minus median and you get an answer smaller than zero, then the data is skewed to the left or negatively skewed. And then there's a box and whiskers diagram that shows negatively skewed data. And on the right hand side is a curve where you can see the mean on the left hand side and the median on the right hand side. So the median is greater than or bigger than the mean. Let's do an example. The following box and whiskers plot indicates the weight lot loss of a trainer's clients over a period of two months. The mean weight loss was 6,35 kilograms. Number one, comment on the skewness of the data. So what we need is we have to do a little calculation. We can say mean minus the median. 6,35 minus, and remember the median is Q2, so therefore it's this 5,9, and our answer is 0,45, and it's positive. Therefore, 
we can say the mean minus the median is greater than zero, i.e. positive, therefore the data is positively skewed to the right. The next question says calculate whether there are any outliers. Now we need to do a calculation. First of all, we're working out the IQR, the interquartile range, by saying Q3 minus Q1. Therefore, it's 8,2 minus 4,075, and then it's 4,125. Then the lower boundary is Q1 minus 1,5 times the IQR, which is 4,075 minus 1,5 times 4.125. Therefore, the lower boundary is negative 2,11. The upper boundary is the equation is the formula is Q3 plus 1,5 times the IQR. So it's 8,2 plus 1,5 times 4,125. And then we see that the upper boundary is 14,38. Now we can say, although 11,5, this is our highest value there, cause the data to be skewed to the right. It is not high enough to be classified as an outlier. In the next lesson, I will discuss an O-Jive, or maybe you know it as a cumulative frequency polygon. Click on the video in the left-hand corner to take you straight to the next lesson.